Welcome, everybody, to the channel. Welcome to this new show. I'm Tony No Dimes, here with Max the Animal. Today, we're talking about NFL futures. We're talking about season-long prize pick plays. It's going to be an exciting episode. And uh, going forward, we plan on being here every Friday, every Monday, making some bets, making some prize picks plays. Uh, we're going to go live stream style for you so that you guys can join us, drop some questions, yeah, let us know what you're going with. Or rate me in the chat, tell me an animal that pick sucks, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. All the good stuff. All the good stuff in the comments. So We August, don't know exactly what time yet, but we will obviously let you know beforehand, probably through Twitter or uh you know, something like that. Yeah, we'll keep you updated. Maybe we'll on sure the Twitter. Know. Yeah, but Fridays will be the days that we set our picks for the NFL season. Monday, we'll do a little bit of recapping, talk about how they went. So it's going to be a good season. Nothing but dubs. Nothing but dubs. All right, you ready to get into it? Let's do it. <laughs> So let's start off with some price pick plays. Lovely sponsors of everything we do here at BDGE. There's a couple that I really like and a couple I'm not really sure if I want to give them out yet. I don't really know if I feel comfortable. Yeah, you don't know if you want to put your name behind it. Yes, exactly. That's I more what it is. I feel that. Mine, I feel very confident about. I'm already counting my cash, already spending it because I know that these are locks. So I'm just going to start off with my first one. We got a touchdown total from Alan Lazard. And Dalton Schultz. The line is set at five and a half for both of these players. And last season, both of them scored a total of eight touchdowns. All right. They demolished this line. All right. So let's start with Alan Lazard. First of all, we all know the news that Devontae Adams left the Packers, is leaving behind a lot of targets, a lot of opportunities in the red zone. And Alan Lazard's the man now. Whether whether or not he likes it, he, he is going to have to grow up and be the man. To be the man. He has to be the man of that wide receiver room because the alpha, former alpha, left. So it's up to him now. Uh, he's got chemistry with Aaron Rodgers. I do think the Green Bay Packers are going to rely on him to basically replace Devontae Adams as much as you possibly can. Alan Lazard is the guy who's been there the longest. He's got the most rapport. I mean, outside of Randall Cobb. He's got the most rapport with Rodgers. He's young. He's fast. He's big. He's strong. He has the best opportunity to crush all of these lines. Uh, and then Dalton Schultz. I mean, similar situation like Devontae Adams leaves. Amari Cooper leaves. Mm -hmm. Also... Uh, this man already crushed that line, so I think he's going to be the red zone guy for Dak Prescott and the Cowboys in their offense this year. And uh, another thing that I think might go in his favor that might help out is I think this Dallas Cowboys defense is going to take a giant step back. Was their defense even like good last year? Or did Trayvon Diggs just have like a lot of interceptions? But that that's what like yeah. kind of helped. That's what made this defense the second most efficient in the league. And without those touchdowns, they're going to need the offense to be putting up those points. And yeah, I just think they're going to get more shootouts this year. I think they're going to be a a very like a over in the total type team. You know, you see the Cowboys on the card. You're like, that is a game that's always going over because it's the fucking Cowboys. Yeah. So I expect them to throw the ball a lot. I expect Dalton Schultz to be a big part of that offense. Uh, really, it's just, it's mathematics, right? They both crushed this number last year. They should have more opportunities this year. Uh they're hitting it. I like that word you used there, mathematics. My entry here is very uh, math based, and it's really not. I'm you know I'm a big instinct guy. We know that, right? I went down the math route. I went with Javonta Williams more than 925 and a half rushing yards. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. He had 903 last season. He wasn't even getting the full workload. Damn. He had 903 last season. He wasn't even the feature back. New quarterback with. Uh, the name Russ Wilson, you ever hear of him? Yeah, he's a lot a better times. than Titty, Teddy Bridgewater, than Titty Bridgewater, right? Yeah. Titty wasn't getting anything done out there. Every single drive ended on a third and like 13. And he was throwing it. We were, it was garbage. No chances for a running back to really get anything going. So I think he obliterates this line. Absolutely obliterates. I think he's going to go for 1,100 yards minimum. I think the mathematics backs it up. I like it. So what would you pair that with? I did pair it with something. I'll tell you what I did. What'd you pair it with? Cam Akers, less than 900 Point five rushing yards. I went with the more, I went with the less, and here's why. Cam Akers can barely walk right now. The reports have not been anything good. Anything to to convince me that he's going to play enough games, play at a consistent rate, where he's going to be able to hit this number. I feel like a thousand yards, I think, I don't have the research. I, I'm only so much of a mathematics guy, numbers guy, but I believe it was only eight guys who went for a thousand yards rushing last season. It was single-digit running backs, for yeah. sure. So, on a team that's going to be coming off of a Super Bowl hangover, Stafford's elbow's already fucked, the Rams are fucked, Akers is fucked, this whole situation is just fucked. Cam Akers less than 900 
and a half rushing yards. It might be my favorite line I've seen next to Javante Williams. I don't have and that. That's why I paired him. I don't have that as a play yet, but I for sure got to get some action on that because that seems too good to be true. So that was just a little two square play for you right there. Two squares, yeah. All right, I got another two square play for you. I'm gonna go with Mark Andrews and Debo Samuel to both have more than three and a half games with 100 or more receiving yards. I know that kind of gets confusing. A lot of numbers thrown out there, all right? But both of them need to hit four games with at least 100 receiving yards. Both of them hit this mark five times. They just need to get four. Last year, they hit five, all right? The Ravens, they lost Marquise Brown, who hogged up 146 targets, all right? The other thing about the Ravens is, you know, I feel like all offseason we heard that they want to be running the ball more. They want to get back to that, like, 2019 version where they just ground and pound the shit out of defenses. Exactly, dude. Like, J.K. Dobbins, still not healthy. Gus Edwards, still hurt. Still sucks. Still stinks. Mike Davis, still the best. But that's all right. Let's chill with that. They're not gonna be able to run the ball with Mike Davis that efficiently. So I think by necessity, they're gonna have to revert to what they were last year and keep on slinging the ball. They're just gonna have to. Uh, That's how their offense is gonna have to operate, whether they like it or not. So I mean, he's the clear target there. Clear target number number one. Clear number one target. And then on the other side, we got Debo Samuel. Just want you guys to know, local 49ers expert. So you make sure you take this advice. Listen. Biasly unbiased. Yes. For this 49ers line. All right. Look, he had a, he had five times. Five times last year he hit this with Jimmy Garoppolo. Now Trey Lance is the starter. Debo Samuel also had that contract, you know, a little scuffle in the offseason. Biggest part of it was he did not want to be a running back. All right. He got a shit ton of yards on the ground just from basic handoffs. That's not him. That's not what he wants to do. He doesn't want to risk that, all right? I think he just gets more catches around the line of scrimmage. Trey Lance also got the arm to go deep with it. Mm -hmm. Not that Debo Samuel is necessarily the guy you put on the outside and have him run deep routes, but I just think that at least opens it up for him a little bit. You know, maybe you see a few more of those as the season goes along. You know what? Even if Trey Lance isn't that good, they brought back Jimmy G. They brought him back. So I think at worst, you know that the Niners are going to have mediocre quarterback play. So Debo Samuel, yeah. Debo Samuel, I, I really like him to have a big year as long as he can stay healthy. That's honestly going to be the Don't biggest even fucking. With that, everyone, I, that, that's with that's that goes for every single everyone. person. Yeah, but Debo just makes but me specifically nervous. I like that you said that about the the, the 49ers quarterback play because that plays into my. Oh, does uh, it? Yeah, we didn't even plan this, but it worked out. I have Trey Lance less than three thousand four hundred and fifty point five passing yards. And you think that's because he won't play a full season? The thing with any of these season long entries is when you when you make them, you always have to realize that an injury. Uh, a bad performance, whatever, can easily make your line hit. Like, can easily get you to where you need to be just because he comes out, he plays six games, and he's just, they're all stinky games. Jimmy G's coming in there, and Trey Lance ain't hitting this line. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Trey now yes. that Jimmy's behind him. I also just think he's going to be um, uh, using his legs a lot. So, 34-50, it's not a ton of passing yards, but for a guy who hasn't played a full season yet, who hasn't they really gotten a full, hasn't got a full year in the system, he still depends on his legs. I just think there's no chance he even comes close to this, honestly. But do you think he's going to play a full season? I, like, I Why do. did they bring back Jimmy G? I think it was just the value of Jimmy G fell into their lap. But isn't the value, like bringing him in, doesn't that devalue like everything now because of what it does to Trey Lance, what it does to the, what the media runs with and everything? Like, the yes, noise. but also no. Because I like while it does bring noise, I think Shanahan, John Lynch, the 49ers, they don't give a fuck about the noise that's going yeah. on. And then uh, the other square here to uh, close off this entry, I got Matt Ryan. Uh, more than 3,900.5 passing Love yards. Love and that. I actually have that in, a, in I another mean, one. The reason is simple. He only hasn't hit this number three times in his career. It was the first three years he was in the league. So, you know, he got it out of his system. That's it. He's also on a much better team. Now, he hit this number last year with the Falcons. Okay. With the fucking Falcons. With the fucking Falcons. He's on the Indianapolis Colts now with a much better line, better weapons. He's got a better team, better coach. Phil Rivers played with the Colts on a worse Colts team and went for 41-69. Matt Ryan is crushing this fucking number. Matt Ryan is crushing this line. He's going to obliterate this ain't even close. easy money. Way off. Uh, on so, the yeah, line. Matt Ryan, more than uh, 3,900.5. And then you Trey pa- Lance, Trey. less than thirty four fifty point five passing. I mean, listen, I'm a sharp. It's simple. Lock it in. While we're on the, the topic of Matt Ryan, I found a line where 
It's three and a half games of at least 300 passing yards. Matt Ryan with the Falcons hit this four times last year, all right? Well, that's what he needs to do, three and a half. That's what he needs to do. But now, he, like we said, he's with the Colts. Yeah. So I like is. that line, too. I like him taking over three and a half games with at least 300 passing yards. And I paired that with Jameis Winston to have over two and a half games of 300 passing yards. Jameis Winston coming off the injury, as we know. Mm-hmm. He's got a lot of weapons. Notoriously in, threw for 5,000-something uh, yards that year, too, right? Yeah. The, so his first he's year— done it. He's done it. The first year with the Saints, he actually did not hit this line of 300 passing yards once in his six games that he played before he got hurt. However, if you want to go back to his last year in Tampa Bay, he hit it 11 times. I don't want to go back to his year in Tampa Bay because it's a completely different offense. He's in a good system, and you know, even though he doesn't have necessarily Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, like he crushed that line. Jameis, we've seen take a fuck it and chuck it approach. Yeah. Which is what we need here. For sure. Three games. Yeah, you're not worried about 300 yards. You don't care. No, not at all. So I like that one from Jameis Winston. I'm feeling good about it. Uh, I'm going to go with one more play. I got one more I want to throw out there. I want to go with Mac Jones, more than 3,900 passing yards, and Trevor Lawrence, more than 3,950 passing yards. All right? So... I'll start with Mac Jones because I think that one is the more questionable one, right? We saw a really conservative New England offense last year. I think that changes, all right? Josh McDaniels is out. We don't really know what's going on with the OC position in yeah, I'm surprised New you're England. Going on, on the more end I, I'm here. going on the more. Here's why. Kind of a little under the radar news that happened. All right, everyone take the last. No, 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 no. Listen to this. Listen to this. Last year, the Patriots played 21% of their snaps with a fullback. This year, going into this year, they don't even have a fullback rostered. So almost a quarter of their plays, they are no longer running with 21 personnel. They were with the 49ers, you know, as the top two teams running hella 21 personnel, which is basically like saying, yo, we're just running the ball here. Yeah. So, you know, all reports out of camp is that this is going to be a faster paced offense, which is nice because last year they were quite literally the slowest paced offense. Also to go along with that, I think their defense is just not what it what we've seen with Bill Belichick, all right? They lost JC Jackson. I don't know how well they're going to be able to play their man coverage. So I think similar to the Cowboys, they're going to be in positions where they they're going to have to sling the rock, all right? They're not going to be able to just shut down, run the ball, waste clock. They're going to need Mac Jones to bump up the volume. I don't know if it's going to be more efficient volume, but it's got to be more efficient. And look, listen, listen, Mac Jones last year had 3,800 yards. He missed this line by 100 yards in the most conservative fashion ever. And he had that game where he threw three times. Exactly. He basically missed a game. Yeah. He basically missed a game and almost got to 3,900 yards. So I like Mac Jones to hit the more on there. Trevor Lawrence, look, the dude's... He's hoping for the, the real Trevor Lawrence. The real Trevor thought. Lawrence here. Yeah. I mean, come on. He, he didn't have any fucking weapons last year. His top weapons were like Jamal Agnew, he didn't Dan even Arnold. Coach, man. And coach, he didn't have a coach. Urban wasn't even the president. His old line was getting hurt. Travis Etienne never showed up. Like, yeah. it was a full-on shit show. All of us had a front row to it. I mean, now you add Zay Jones. Now you add Evan Ingram. You obviously add Christian Kirk. You can complain about the value all you want and that they get paid too much, but that doesn't matter. What matters is, is Trevor Lawrence has a legit offense now surrounding him. And, you know, the, the Jags had a pretty tough schedule last year. This year, they're projected to have one of the easier ones. So I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be slinging that rock. And he should have 4,000 yards. Trevor Lawrence, lock it in. Yeah, I don't hate it. I think it's definitely, there's there's some upside on Trevor Lawrence in a lot of places this, uh, this season. So those are our prize pick plays for the future, for the 2022 yes, uh, NFL also, season. If it's uh, your first time uh, using prize picks, make sure you use promo code BDGE, and uh, you'll get a hundred, hundred, hundred percent deposit match uh, up to $100, I believe. I always have to say I believe at the end, just in case, I don't know. Just in case they pull just the rug case, on us. Just in case they change the promo, you got to you gotta cover your ass. Code BDG. Code All right. BDG. Let's um, move on to some NFL futures. I say we go division by division, talk about the teams that we like. Uh, let's start in the East. How about we do that? We'll go East to West. NFC East. I want to start there really because I want to take the Philadelphia Eagles to win the NFC East. Right now, I'm looking at odds. Uh, it, they're basically tied I with the Cowboys. plus 150 basically everywhere. Plus 150 for them and the Cowboys. Reason why I like Philly instead of Dallas. Look, Eagles have probably the best O-line in the NFL, at least if you ask pro football focus. They got them rated number one. Obviously, a much improved wide receiver core with A.J. Brown heading to Philly. 
And we saw last year Philly in the first six weeks of the season, they were passing the ball a ton. And defenses wanted them to do that. They were expecting them to do that. And the Eagles just weren't successful doing that. They then changed, became a run-heavy team, and found much success doing that. Had a little bit of an offensive explosion. They started winning games. So I think they found themselves a little bit of an identity. Even if defenses kind of adjust to them being more of a run-heavy team, like we said, we've kind of they've addressed their passing attack. And really, this comes down to do you believe in Jalen Hurts? Because everything around Philly is set up for success. They got the defense. They have a nice secondary. They got pass rushers. They got the offense. They really do. Dallas Goddard, great. All right. Do we believe in Jalen Hurts? I'm going to say yes. To win me some games, I'm going to say yes. This is not a tough division. This is a two-horse race. I do think Jalen Hurts takes a big step up. What do you think of Jalen Hurts? I mean, I don't have anything against him. I don't think he's... he's not, I think he's a better fantasy quarterback than he's an NFL quarterback. When, when it comes down to, like, two teams, same value, I go to the quarterback. Dak Prescott over Jalen Hurts for me. I, I mean, I don't disagree that I would rather have Dak, but I think the Cowboys' defense is just due for regression. It's hard to count on turnovers year by year. If, you, if they're going to be shooting out and, and scoring a ton of points, then it doesn't matter if their defense sucks as long as they can outscore their opponent every week. And, like, I think... But they just... I, I think they benefited so much from getting short fields, scoring a lot on the defensive the, side. The problem with the Eagles is you got a guy like Jalen Hurts. Like, when it comes down to your two-minute drills and your four-minute drills and stuff like that, and you need a touchdown, like, you need to go 90 yards. Like, I don't feel comfortable or even have any faith in Jalen Hurts leading the team down the field for 80 yards to score, like throwing it. I'm taking Dak in that situation. He can throw the ball. Yeah, but I mean, that offense as a whole, I, I just don't think is is as suited as well either. I like the weapons better in Philly, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think I think losing Amari Cooper is really going to hurt Dallas this year. They also, their O-line is in shambles. Tyron Smith got yeah, it's hurt. It's not great. I mean, so personally, when it comes liability. to this division... I'm not betting it. I'm staying away. I'm definitely all on Philly. Like I have I a couple of divisions that it's just like I, I don't see value anywhere. I'm not touching it. That's it. See you later. I, I love Philly to win this division. I right, think they let's, let's stay I, in I the think NFC. they're taking a step up. Let's go to NFC um North. Sure. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I wanted to go north because uh I really like the Vikings this year. I'm feeling them. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. That's that's so this is one of the divisions I will I will bet. I got plus, plus 260, 260 on the Vikings. Yep, that's yeah. what I'm looking at, too. Uh, I mean, the Packers have notoriously dominated this division for years. Eventually, eventually, someone's going to have to step up, and I think this is the year the Vikings do it. You got Justin Jefferson. It's not even set up for, like, a breakout year. It's set for, like, a record-setting year, like people are thinking. Uh, Kirk Cousins is a baller. I've been on a Kirk Cousins fan for a long time now. Uh, Vikings defense has kind of been shit, which you would have thought with Mike Zimmer being a defensive guy, like they would have got their defense in order. Maybe this is the year. But the real thing is the Packers. Is Aaron Rodgers even give a fuck about football anymore? Does he even care? Like who? There's no, that team. I think is just headed for disaster. A disaster. Yeah, I think they win eight games, and that's it. I think the the Vikings easily win this division. Uh, Detroit not worried about Bears not worried about it's really yeah. just the Packers and I think the Packers are going to beat themselves where the Vikings just have to play their game and win you know just, just go out there and beat the teams that outside of the Packers fuck the Packers don't worry about the Packers I mean Packers still have a good defense they still have Aaron Rodgers uh -huh. but it's gonna be weird it's gonna be weird not having any reliable weapons on that offense that's got to be huge for them and really it's less of a bet against the Packers and more just like in total support of the Vikings. I mean, we know Kevin O'Connell coming from Sean McVay's coaching tree is now in Minnesota. Uh, he ran a bunch of three wide receiver sets, which is something that the Vikings never did under Mike Zimmer. Mike Zimmer was all in on the heavy packages using fucking yeah, double runs. tight ends, shit like that. So I think that's going to open up the offense a lot more. I think Dalvin Cook is in for such a good year this year. Kirk's going to cook and Cook's going to cook? Absolutely. It's going to be a bunch of cooking? Yep. Even with Mike Zimmer, the Vikings were 12th in yards per play as an offense. Like, they were a slightly above average offense with a coach that you could say was just holding them back. Yeah. So, I think Vikings will definitely have a top-notch offense this year. Uh, their defense was not good at all, but they were also dealing with a lot of injuries on that side of the ball. Had a pretty difficult schedule. So, the Vikings defense won't be their strong suit, but it will be better than it was last Never year. It really has been, yeah. No. It's got to... The offense just needs to uh, keep it going. For plus 260, love the fucking exactly. Vikings Exactly, that's what spot. it is. I, I try to find value. So, right. that's really what we're looking for. All right. NFC South. Go Who, to the South. Who's got the value in the South? Because, for me, it's the Saints, and I think for you, it's also the love Saints. Love the Saints. Love think, the Saints uh, in this division. 
the Bucks, there's a lot of question marks, a lot of injuries, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Tom Brady obviously is an old man. He's still probably an awesome old man, but there's always that chance that this is the year. This is the year. There's always that chance that this is the year that he falls off a cliff. It's never been that, but there's always a chance. And, I mean, you made some interesting points before the show, but the Saints, yeah, they have a new head coach, but it's not an unfamiliar coach. Like, you know, Dennis Allen's been there for years. Their offensive coordinator's been there for what? Pete Carmichael. Been there for 15 years. For 15 years, people. It's not like this is some new coaching staff coming 13 in. 13 years, sorry. Whatever, 13. Myself. If it's 13. over five years, it's, that's fucking great. In the <laughs> he NFL crushes it. Point. Yeah, it doesn't He's matter. crushing the years. Uh, Jameis coming back from the injury, should be healthy, ready to go. Chris Olave, stud rookie. Michael Thomas, apparently ready to go. I mean, the Saints are a good team. They won nine games last year with you know Trevor Simeon and Taysom, Taysom Hill. Hill. And like that's because of their coaching staff. Right, so, no Michael Thomas, no Chris Olave, like you were saying. Yeah, like so like it it's really just comes down to whether or not like they can add on a couple wins to their season, which I think they can with a healthy Jameis. And I think the Bucks are headed in a downward spiral here. At least for the Bucks, it's scary to see the injuries that they're already dealing with, and we're not even in week one. Yeah. They lost the entire interior of their offensive line. And they are dealing with new coaching staff. They're also, well, it's kind of similar to the Saints. Todd yeah. Bowles has been there. Not as long as fucking, you know. Not as long as Dennis Allen. Right. And uh, so I, I do think the Saints in that regard will have more continuity with their team. Also, we didn't even say plus 310. Plus 310. So much plus money to go so with much the Saints. Value. Yeah, I really don't think the Saints are that far behind from the Bucks in this race for the division. I mean, they, Saints, were four, they were four and two in the division last year. Saints. They kind of so were the Bucks. They kind of have ownage on the Bucks, like head to head. Yes, yeah. exactly. The Bucks were four and two last year in the division. Saints were four and two in the division. Carolina and Atlanta don't matter. Saints had an amazing defense <laughs> last year. They also add Tyron Matthew. I think that's going to be big for their defense. Saints have been the biggest riser for me during this offseason. Like, when the yeah. offseason started, I did they're not get like the two shits about them. like the quiet everyone forgot about, and they're just going to be pretty good. Yeah, they're going to yeah. make a ruckus, yeah. for sure. All right, NFC West rounded out with the uh, last uh, division here, your division. It is my division, which is why I don't feel comfortable really betting on this, because this would be a total bet with the heart. However... I don't know. Like so, I said, it's a bet with the heart. I'm going to take the 49ers take the Niners plus your heart. 160. Congrats. Here's the real analysis, everybody. We're taking the Arizona Cardinals at plus 400. You got the, the Rams with a Stafford injury. Look, here's the deal. The Rams were 12-5 and five last year. The Cardinals were 11-6. and six. Like It's not like they, they, they were there. They were right there. Kyler fell off. That's what happens. The, that's where the Rams are starting. They're starting with a falling off Matthew Stafford. They're starting with a Super Bowl hangover. Starting with the bad cam makers. It's just, it's all downhill for the Rams here. I think this is the Cardinals division to lose. Brother. I'm telling you, I don't care about D Hop out for however. Dude, like D Hop wasn't I, even that special. I swear to God, I thought you were going to say, "Here's the real analysis going with the Rams." I can't no. believe you just pivoted to the Cardinals. I didn't pivot. This is. Like, I know. I know you didn't like. I got pivot. a parlay down with a minute, man. Dude, like, that's absurd. It's not. They were that like they were. Well, what were they last year? Weren't they? They ate. They weren't they eight and what six they, and zero oh at one point or some shit. Yeah, and, one, they, and this is the classic Cliff Kingsbury. The dude yes, fucking fell blows off. it but, every year. But this isn't new. Yeah, he but blows they, it every year. They blew it. Yeah, but I mean that's a small sample size. Every year it's been three years. Like how many years has he been a coach? How many years does he need to blow it before well, it's not a small? Well, here's what I'm saying is I think that this is the year. Just like it's the this year for Tom Brady to fall off. This is the year Cliff Kingsbury blasts off. They lose their best pass rusher in Chandler Jones. They have a dog Irrelevant. shit O-line. Kyler Murray can't play a full 16. Irrelevant. D-Hop suspended. Exactly. That's the whole point. When If they can just manage to win some games when D-Hop's not there, by the time he gets back, it's going to be just what they need to keep going. That's what they've been missing all these years is a guy being suspended for half the season. <laughs> I think this is only a two-horse race between the Rams and the Niners. I think this is like the Rams' division to win, barring any injuries. I know we said that kind of applies to anyone, but I think specifically with the Rams, they're just not a deep team. You look at all their starters, and you're like, how the fuck does this team lose? If I think if any of them go down, I think if Jalen uh, Ramsey goes down, like there goes their secondary. They literally don't have any That's what I'm replacement saying. I think the Rams level. are literally on their last leg. They're done. It's the Cardinals' division to lose. The no, Niners, the Cardinals maybe the division maybe the lose. Niners, but the, the Cardinals went one and four in their last five, like last year, like in the, in the last stretch, like they, they finished eleven and six. They because went one and four in their last five. So I'm saying the, they the, fell the, apart at the end of the season. All they have to do is not fall apart one year. Football is a game of adjustments. The Cardinals cannot adjust to save their fucking lives. They fucking tucked the shirts in this year, dog. Dude, their shirts remain untucked. They start the season untucked, and then when everyone's like, "Okay, we we see you with your untucked shirt," time to tuck it in. They don't tuck. No, they tuck in this year. Uh, Arizona Cardinals. Plus I, 400 to win the NFC. Right, let's get out uh, of the NFC. NFC I hate West. That. Hated that. 
Need right. that Cardinals one. You're you're a dumb. AFC West, I feel like is like some of these are going to be quick because AFC West is the Bills. Like I don't want to argue about anything else. It's you're the talking Bills. about the East then. That's what I meant. AFC okay, East. Okay, we want to yeah. go to the East. AFC East, like it's just the Bills. Like I'm not going to bet any money on them. I'll put. I got in, no bet on this. I'll use division. them in a, in a parlay for an extra leg. That's about it right now. But like I'm not betting minus two forty. I'm not taking the Patriots. Not taking the Dolphins and the Jets. You know. AFC right. North. Let's go to the North. AFC North. This is one of the toughest divisions, I think, to try and figure out right now because you want to lean towards Cincinnati. I have a bet for Cincinnati, and this is one I do not feel confident in. Yeah, and at I all. think, honestly, I think the Ravens are the going to be the. I think the Ravens are going to win the division. I don't want to bet them, though. So, so, another one that I'm not touching. I don't see any value, really. The Ravens should, but they also, like, by this time, you would just expect them to be more healthy than they are. Like, last year, they were decimated in injuries, and yeah, you're like, okay, still... this could be a down year. But then they really haven't recovered. Well, here's the thing, though. is like the, the Bengals won that division with 10, 10 wins, and the, the Ravens were decimated, and they had eight. Right. And but the, they also, the... like, they lose Marquise Brown. I don't think their O-line is— I think Bateman will fill that role fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think, like, losing— Brown, Brown was a great deep target for them. Yeah, for sure. It's I just think like, it's the it's it's not even close. I think it's you. You don't think it's close. I think the Ravens are the better all around better team. Wow, I really do. Let me let me talk through this scenario though. I think the biggest downfall for Cincy last year was their O line. Right, Joe Burrow was getting killed anytime he dropped back. I mean, they addressed that issue. They didn't they didn't even address it. They like threw down some serious cash to make that O line good. I mean, they added uh, Leo Collins, who was a guy you really wanted. Mm-hmm. They added. I'm trying to find the names here because I always Look, I love the bank. Alex Kappa, Ted stuff. Karras. They drafted Jackson Carmen. Mm -hmm. If you told, if I told you that last year you took that Bengals team, ripped out their O line, replaced it with a top ten O line, do you think they win the Super Bowl? Because their O line last year was like dog shit. That was like a bottom five. Once you make it to the playoffs, I don't. None of it matters at that point. Any team in the playoffs can go from there. All I'm saying is, I think their biggest liability last year can now be looked at as a little bit of a strength. It's definitely not like what's going to kill them. Sure, I still think the thing is like. The Ram, the, the Ravens went zero and five in their last five last year, and they finished eight and nine. Yes, the Bengals finished ten and seven. But what I'm saying is, the the Bengals did overachieve last year, yeah, right? So even like if they went, get Bengals get two games better, I think the the Ravens are still that that they're equal at that point. If not, then you know it comes down to their head to heads in the division for who actually wins. Yeah, I. I think the I think most people think the the like you're saying the Bengals are either going to be like even or they kind of regress, but I think they could actually take a step forward from where they, they even were one were last five year. in the division last year too. Okay, I'm just saying like I mean it's still it's still a tough division. I don't think that happens again. I think the Ravens walk away with this one easily. Anyway, so you would bet the Bengals? I do I do have a bet on the Bengals. Um, I, you know Joe Burrow also second year off a torn ACL. That's usually better than mm-hmm. the next season right after. I agree the Ravens should win this. I think on paper they are the better team, but there's something about like what's going on in Baltimore right now that I just don't trust. And I think people are are doubting Cincy a little too hard. So I'm taking Cincinnati to win the AFC North. Uh, Let's go to AFC South. This one should be quick. AFC South. uh, So you think that. I know that. that you're you're all on the Colts. Absolutely. I respect it. But as far as as far as like gambling goes and, and value, it's the Titans. No, it's for not. me. It's the Titans here. Plus one seventy five. Is that what I remember it being? Uh I'm looking at plus yeah, plus one seventy, one seventy five. That's the value in this division. Uh they won it last year. Yeah, I know it's Matt Ryan now and it's not Carson Wentz, but when you really think about that, say that out loud, like how much better is Matt Ryan than Carson so much Wentz? Better. Obviously, yards wise, Carson Wentz, I don't think he's ever thrown for thirty five hundred yards. Uh Matt Ryan has done that many, many times. I just think like this Colts team, they're going to be good. They're going to be better. It's just I don't know how much worse the Titans are going to be there. Everyone thinks everyone thinks the Titans are going to be so bad this year. The Titans are that team that just they have a good defense every year and they have a good coach who knows how to win football games. And Ryan Tannehill is an old vet, just goes out there, and plays football. And Tennessee won 12 games last year in this division. And no one else has really gotten much better. Jags got a little better. Texas might have got a little bit better. But they went five uh, and one in the division. And the Colts went three and three. So, like, obviously, it's going to come down to these head to head matchups. It's so much different with Carson Wentz. I think it's going to come down to the head to head matchups between the Colts and the Titans for the division. I think they're going to be very close in actual record. I think that it's going to come down to just whether you're going to have a fucking Derrick Henry that's healthy now. Her- kind of. A healthy Derrick Henry 
I mean, he should be healthy, but it's also like that whole team is reliant on that running back. Yeah, and they didn't have him last year, and they won the division, and they won 12 games. They won the division because the rest of the division was dog shit. It's the same team, just it's Matt Ryan now instead of Carson Wentz. Dude, you're underestimating how big I know there's Matt a gap Ryan there. Is. Trust me, a huge I know. gap. But I'm just saying, I don't know. Is it a fucking three yes, or four? Yes. Is it a three, four game gap? Carson Wentz was ranked as the 33rd most accurate quarterback last year. Matt Ryan was the third. You're going from top five to not even a starting quarterback. For sure. Dude, I just think the Colts I, have they have a tough schedule too. I mean, I, I don't just, I don't think their schedule is that hard. They're playing it, the AFC West. They're playing the AFC West, but going That's up against of football. Yeah, but they also go up against their own division, and I don't think the Titans are that good. They also go up against the NFC East, which pr- is probably the worst division in football. How many points the Titans allowed last year? I don't know. Three hundred and fifty-four. How many is that per game? I don't, I don't know. Well, I can't do the math. I can't. I can't fucking... either. I'm just saying that it's very low. <laughs> okay. All right. That's a low number. I think. You think? Chiefs let up 364. Broncos 322. And how many of the Titans let up? 354. Colts 354. were 365 last year. And the Titans had 419 uh, points for, and the Colts had 451. So the Colts were a better offense last year and basically an equal defense. And I think the Titans' offense is going to be better this year. And no. I think the Colts' offense is going to be how better this year. How is the Titans' year. offense going to be better? They're both going to be better this year. They're both going to be better from what they were last year. But how is the Titans getting better? Because they have Derrick Henry. They also don't have A.J. Brown. They don't have any Fuck receiving weapons. A.J. Brown. They don't have any receiving weapons. They got Traylon Burks. Unfortunately, Traylon yeah. they have. Don? They, unfortunately, they wasted a first-round pick on Traylon Don. Fucking Bobby Trees. You forget about him? I did forget about him, but that doesn't make me feel better. a couple of broken branches. He's still all right. Oh, man, dude. I think it's going to be so rough all for I'm the Titans this is, year. If you're, if you're I don't even like, like they're over. If you're betting, you know, what's the line for the Colts? Minus 140? That, it's minus 120. Minus that's not bad. That's not I, bad. Dude, that's what I'm saying. I think even though what it's I'm a saying, minus number. It's a trap line. I don't think so. I think that's value, a good value. The real value is the Titans. I dude, can't wait I, to look back on this 18 weeks. I can't either because I think minus 130 is a good value. The, okay, let's put it this way. The Buffalo Bills are minus two something, right? Yes. I think the Colts have just as good a chance of winning their division as the Bills do theirs. Yeah. I think both of them are locks to win that division. I think the Colts actually have a good shot at being the one seed just because they have the easier division. Like the, the Bills are going to have to eat each other against the fucking Dolphins and the Patriots. The Colts are going to have cakewalks against these guys. We'll see. I think you're, I think you think the Colts are a lot better than they are. I think you, you think they're a lot worse than they are. I, I do. All right. I do a hundred percent. All right. I'm last really division, best division of football, West. AFC West. Um, here's the deal. I'm going to predict the division right now. I'm realistic. Chargers are going to win it. Broncos are going to come in second. Chiefs are going to come in third. Raiders in fourth. Chiefs in third. Raiders fourth. Yeah. Um, I actually do have a bet on this. Okay. I have Broncos to win the division. It's the best value. If you're gambling, it's the best value. Well, I'm actually, not. I'm not. The, star- I'm not starting to like it as much as when I first placed it. Chargers are like 225. Broncos are 270. Yeah, I think I like the Chargers a little bit better there. I, I'm just yeah. Chargers are growing me a lot. And as a Broncos fan, I just got to be completely honest. I think we're going to be great team this year. I think we're going to do very well. I just don't know. Like winning the division, you know, your first year. It's not easy, especially in a tough division. So I think it could take Russell a year to fully get acclimated to to Denver and the team and everything like that. So I'm not going to say we're going to go out there and win the division right away. Maybe next year. Maybe the year after that. (laughs) But this year, I'm going to be humble. I think the Chargers are are the team to take it this year. I think the Chiefs have have owned that spot for a while now. And uh, it's the Chargers' time to shine. You know what it is about the Chargers? I like them because they're aggressive, but I also think that's their downfall. Like, I think as cool as Brandon Staley is as a head coach, they kind of just shoot themselves in the foot every year. Well, for sure. And I don't know if that's going to change. That's I'm just I'm betting on the fact that they're going to be so aggressive, they're just going to be outscoring yeah. opponents, and it's going to be hard for most I, I agree. Most their defense to, is also sick as hell. To keep up. Yeah, like, even if they you know go for it on fourth down every time, like, if they the first two they don't get it and they get on that third one, that's all that matters if, the, if that's what they needed, you know? Yeah, I'm making the case for when I first placed this, bet I definitely think the Chargers are the team I would bet on now going forward but when I was making the Broncos bet I was just thinking of like all those times people are like let Russ cook he's in this conservative offense they're not being aggressive enough and then I'm like oh he's got Cortland Sutton he's got that run game he's I mean, got Jerry also, Judy this is Daniel like, Hackett coming from Green Bay our defense Fuck everybody else. our defense is the closest thing that he's had since the Legion of Boom too like we're not uh, they might have the, the best secondary in the league which obviously the best. The well, yeah, of the I mean, our was. defense is fucking is very good. Yeah, Bradley we, Chubb as a pass we, rusher. We have very good defense right now. I mean, even our safeties from 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 the front all the way to the back. You know, we're we're stacked. I mean, this is probably the best team I think Russ has ever played on. Yeah, I, I, so. I Legion of Boom was was also really good. It's but good I, team, I think it was offensive as, weapon wise. I think we have better offensive weapons right now between yeah. Javonta Williams. I mean, Marshall Lynch, obviously, you know, probably the best running back he's ever played with. But outside of that, I mean, shit, wide receivers are studs. They'll be all right. 
You know, o, o line, line might the best only offensive be, line. I was gonna say it might only be an average O line, but Russell Wilson's used to having mean? the worst O lines. Not average, we're a very good offensive line. Eh, Eric Bowles is one of the best left tackles in the league. Dalton Reiser is a great offensive guard. Lloyd Cushenberry, another guy on the O line. Another guy who was a stud, national championship center for Joe Burrow. You know who's our fucking left guard? Quinn Myers. He fucking he would chop trees down with his shoulders. <laughs> That's right? right. I forgot about that. Our line. I forgot stacked. about that. Our fact. right tackles are only like sus, um, sus spot. I'm not saying it's going to be a liability. I'm just not ready to put it as like a, a good line. But either way, I think uh, Russell Wilson will be able to overcome any adversity that might that might possibly come from there. Actually, my biggest worry with the Broncos is really Nathaniel Hackett. I don't actually yes. know much about yeah, him. Yeah, I don't know much about him either. I don't really like him. You don't. You already don't like him. Seems like a bitch. Yeah, a little bit. I think the upside. I think the Broncos have the most upside in this division. I'll put it that way. For sure. Yes. I mean, we you know easily the worst team last year. Uh, but I mean. The Chargers, for as much of a high-powered offense as they are, they only won nine games. Questionable nine games. You know, hit the the game between them and the uh, the Raiders at the end of the year, they were both tied. So it was basically you know nine games, ten games, however you want to call it. I mean, they lost us nine games, but Denver won seven and ten. There's we were winning minimum ten games this year. So real quickly, let's just go through what are the final bets you've been making for uh, any NFL futures, team totals, division winners. I just did one parlay. I have one, one parlay. parlay. I mean, I have a couple like crazy ones, but like my one that's like actually serious. Yeah. Um, Rip it. It is three picks: Minnesota Vikings to win the North, Saints to win the South, and the Bills to win the East. I like it. I like those a lot. Plus nineteen ninety one. I bet twenty five dollars to win five hundred and twenty two dollars. I have a five leg parlay, and then I have these division winners just to win their division straight up. I have, I don't have the bet slip in front of me, but if I remember correctly, it is the Vikings, the Saints, the Colts. No, I didn't, I didn't put Colts in there. Ooh. I know. I, sh- I really wish I did, but I didn't. It was in the NFC it was Vikings, Saints, Eagles, and in the AFC, it was Bengals and it was Broncos. I put on the parlay, I put like 20 bucks down. I think it was when to like win 7,500 or something. So I, I need that to hit because I've already spent that money, but also like those individually, more or less. I, I would say the Bengals and the Broncos I don't feel as good as when I first placed it. But the other, the NFC ones, feel great about it. Eagles, Saints, Vikings, those would be my three best bets if you're going to bet on the division winner. I think that's all we got. Wonderful. Awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us, talking about futures, talking about prize picks. Once again, you want to hit them with the promo? Uh, promo code BDGE. They didn't change it from the start of this episode. But go ahead, use it. Tell them that we sent you. Get yourself some money. Play prize picks. Load up on them squares. Load up on them plays. Let's get this fucking NFL season started. I'm, I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. So fucking ready. Ready.